I'd like to introduce Dale Eastman. Dale uh, uh, is involved with the Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation. You're a San Antonian. You live here in San Antonio. Yes, I am. So Lovely I can't, city. I, I can't say welcome to San Antonio, <laughs> but I can say to me, welcome to San Antonio. Absolutely. So, it's a lovely yeah, city. It is. And in fact, is it a, Dale, isn't San Antonio now what? The eighth or seventh largest city in the country? It's right up there. I think it? it is. It is. And it's quite spread out, too. I, well, yeah. that's the beauty yeah. of Texas, right? right? Absolutely, you have lots yeah. of space to go either yes. out or straight up. And so it's it's great. I have not been at this conference um, for several years, so it's it's lovely to be back here in San Antonio. As I, and I, I want our audience to know that when it comes to sort of the holy grail, if you will, of breast meetings, this is it. Well, it's probably the biggest international um, breast cancer specific. That's right. Um, meeting there is. That's that, that's say. absolutely correct. Uh, last year, I think they had close to 7,500 people here, and over uh, over uh, 100 countries represented. So, and I think they're up is. to 8,000 this year. Well, of course. Yes. All right. <laughs> well, Dale, please tell us about the Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation. A little bit about its history and what you all do. Okay. Well, let me just um, tell your lay audience that I am a 23-year breast cancer survivor. Stage two, I've had a double mastectomy, and I um, and that was lobular cancer. Okay. And um, I had six months of chemotherapy, so a lot wow. of y'all out there probably can identify with me. Right, right. The Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation started 23 years ago with just four people <clears throat> around my dining room table because in San Antonio 23 years ago, there was very little breast cancer awareness out there. Okay. There was very little information for me. I was, I was just wanted to find out so much about what was going to happen to me before it was going to happen to me. Sure. Because all I knew about was what I saw in movies, and that did right. not look too good. Yeah, and, and when, you think, you know, when you think back to your grandmother's <laughs> breast cancer, Right. Uh, and all the horrors associated with breast cancer, right. including the Halstead radical mastectomy, which literally just sort of took everything. Uh, I mean, it just struck terror in, in your heart, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, and we've come a long way, but we're not quite there yet. I either. understand. Okay, because we as patients and advocates know we're not there yet, right. not till we get our cure. Yep. But anyway, so 23 years ago with these four women, um, we established the Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation, which I guess it happened at a good time since there wasn't a lot of awareness sure. in San Antonio. Sure. And we have now expanded to an international presence. Wow. And we are still, at this point, an all-volunteer okay. organization, okay. which is becoming very difficult for us because we're just getting larger and larger and more commitments. Sure. We do programs of outreach, education. We have a 24-hour bilingual helpline. Oh, fantastic. Um, we um, have a program that we designed here for the San Antonio Breast Cancer um, Symposium just for breast cancer advocates and survivors. Actually, I should not say it's just for, because when I tell you about this program, it's actually open to anybody. Okay. Um, but tell us more about so, the program and how the program works, because it sounds like you're training people to be advocates and who may also have been survivors themselves as well. Is right, that right? Right. Okay. So the way this happened was this <clears throat> small group in San Antonio, and at that time we were beginning to grow, we knew about the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. It's always held here. Sure. So we said, well, we got to be there. And so we called and said, we would like to have a display table. We were not <laughs> especially welcomed, uh, okay, at that yes. particular time. But, you know, my experience, Neil, <laughs> when you are a pioneer, right. when you, uh, you know, think of the pioneers out here in the <laughs> West, for crying out loud. There were all sorts of barriers in front of them, right? Absolutely. So, this was a huge barrier. Yeah. We oh. had to, we, that's, uh, and we had already been advocates. We are an advocacy group, too. So we knew how to 
lobby. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> so we continued, and they finally led us there, but we were monitored all the time to make sure that oh, we weren't doing any lobbying, wrong, right? right? Because right. actually they're a nonprofit, and actually yeah. we know as nonprofits yeah. you can do a certain amount of lobbying, but that had nothing to do with the symposium. Got it. Okay. Okay, so we got there, and then more and more advocates were beginning to take notice of this symposium, breast cancer patients, survivors and advocates, wanted to learn more about their disease and they wanted to be at the decision-making table if they could to Absolutely. have some input on where uh, progress was going with treatment yep. and, and prevention and surgery and yep. whatever. So the symposium organizers after a while began to notice that advocates were important. I would assume, many, well, how, you know what, I assume that's what they how, thought, because how, how, they approached us. Okay, how many <laughs> years did it, did it take you to convince them of that? At least three. Yeah, <laughs> all right. At least three or four. All right. And so the, the symposium organizers invited us, and we were nervous. We didn't know what, what was coming of this. Right. They invited two of us for dinner, and they said, we would like for you to design an advocate program for the symposium. Well, very they good. didn't tell us how to do it, what to do with it, okay. um, and they said, we will give you your first seed money to put this on. Wow. We were like, we couldn't believe it. I, we you were, were outside, like, right? uh, and, then, yeah. and then after jumping up and down and hugging each other, we <laughs> thought, well, 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 what do we do? Yeah. So we sat down and we devised a program and we've stayed true to it, the basic elements of this program from the very beginning. Uh -huh. We fund advocates and patients to come and learn from the symposium, and the main thing is to disseminate it back to their constituencies. There you go. So at our first session, we had 12. And that was how many years ago? Dave? Fifteen. We're celebrating our fifteenth anniversary at the symposium. Congratulations! All right. Tonight we start our first mentor session. We will have uh, thirty-one advocates that we have funded from around the world. Wow. We have five from wow. foreign countries. Wow. So we have thirty-one. We have now educated five hundred and twenty-eight advocates. Wow. Wow. And so we don't just fund them to come. They have. They are assigned a hot topic. Okay. Give, and, give us some examples of a hot topic that they would do. Well, I only got to sit in on two sessions because we're so busy with all the planning that goes around mm -hmm. with this. So I was very excited about one session this morning that was actually looking into an environmental exposure. Okay. Because, it, because <clears throat> in the environment, perhaps, will lead us to a prevention, you know, sure. these exposures. Sure. So they might get that as a hot topic. Okay. So they might have to write on that. Another interesting one that I that I um, heard this morning was that I had to take tamoxifen, and I'm sure a lot of you all out there had to take tamoxifen. Yeah, and now and the 10-year study right, that was presented and, and this morning, oh, yeah. you know, we had to get off at five years. <clears throat> right. Because <clears throat> I thought that it could actually cause cancer, um, maybe of the uterus or something. Correct. And so now they think that 10 years may be beneficial. So, I mean, some, somebody might be assigned that for a hot topic. Okay. And they'll, they'll yeah. disseminate that information back to their constituencies, okay. which they would have a newsletter or a okay. website. All right. Now, so, hold that thought for just one second, because mm -hmm. Todd's going to make a real quick announcement to see if people, I think he's going to say if people want to send in some questions. Okay. That's right. So if you'd like to ask a question, you can send it in to Dale Eastman or Dr. Jay Harness back here. All you have to do is go to the top right corner on Breast Cancer Answers, submit in your question, it'll come to my computer, and I'll, if it's appropriate, I'll bring it to the, the two people that are having this nice conversation about advocacy and developments that are happening here in San Antonio. So thank you for letting me jump in for a brief moment there. I'll give it back to the two of you, Dr. Harness, All right. and let the conversation continue <laughs> so, on. Dale, please, please continue then. So, yes, I, I wanted so to they have assignments, and then uh, the the 30 some folks that are coming in right now mm -hmm. how how long is their training while they're here is it okay. a day's worth how does it work well they are what we learned early on after the, about the first two sessions that we sponsored is that if they don't have some kind of science training okay 
they're not going to understand, and they're not going to be able to write their hot topic. Okay. All right. Very good. So. Um, it's don't, just ignore him. That's <laughs> Dr. Huddis. He doesn't count for anything. I know He's who he is, too. showing up. With so. <laughs> Hi, Cliff. Welcome. Yeah. No, no, no. You're just going on over and over there. We're just chatting away We're going to get here. him as a mentor sometime. Yeah, well, I think okay. he will. Sure. So anyway, so we realized that. <laughs> and what we do now, and I want to tell you all out there that are patients, or maybe you're breast cancer advocates, there are many training programs out there, a lot with the National Breast Cancer Coalition called Project LEAD that helps you learn about the basic science, um, um, epidemiology. It's, it's a good training course. It lasts about five days. And wow. they do have scholarships. Wow. And that would prepare you to be able to attend this symposium and um, understand okay. not totally right. because it's hard. And sure. I'm, they say that a lot of the people that are uh, physicians and clinicians even and researchers even have trouble understanding something. Yeah, yeah. So what we do is we have mentor sessions for three nights where we have experts, highly regarded experts, and they um, help, uh, they, they tell what the highlights of the day are, and okay. then, you, then we open it up for questions. Okay. Besides the 31 patient advocates that we will have in there and survivors in the session tonight, because we'll have a session tonight, okay. there will be the 31 advocates and at least, at least 300 others. Whoa. And I don't, I, I, some of them will be advocates, but there are other people that already know about our program that they want to learn about the highlights of the day yep. in lay terms. Okay, very good. Yeah. And, you know, and actually, that's, <clears throat> speaking of lay terms, that's one of the concepts behind breastcanceranswers.com mm -hmm where we've tried to put information on that site in video in, in layperson's terms. So it's absolutely correct that, you know, that you communicate uh, that way. Mm -hmm. And then, so of the 31 that have scholarships and then the 300 who will also be attending, again, are they pretty much from all over the world? Oh, absolutely. Okay. There's every language imaginable is spoken here. Okay, all right, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we try to communicate with everybody. Um, I just talked to two people from some place, some unusual place in Russia, one of okay. those names that I can't pronounce. Yeah. And there were two women, and I think they were doctors. Okay. And I was trying to tell them about the program, but I got the message across, so I think they're coming tonight. Okay. Well, as, as an example, at my hospital, what we're looking at doing is to have survivor advocates along the whole process. In other words, from right after the diagnosis, uh, you know, sort of going forward from there. In your experience, how, where's the best place for a survivor advocate to get involved, let's say with an individual patient as she's going through, as she's going through the process? Well, we... Or are there several places as well, well as long-term? Well, one place <laughs> that that we do. The organization, the Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation, has a 24-hour helpline, and it's bilingual. So we help patients that way. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. And actually, in the last three years, we've had to t uh, train ourselves to be patient navigators because we're getting more and more calls right. from uninsured, right. uh, poverty-level women. Sure. And our navigators can get women into a program that day. Okay. So we're real good about that. All right. And we have uh, relationships with the Cancer Therapy Research Center here where um, we used to work with patients there, but um, at the present time we're not doing that. But, okay. but you can do that there. They, okay. they want volunteers there to do okay. that. We have so many programs now that we, we've gotten to, to be, you know, we, we're spending our time with that. Okay. So, yeah. Now, I have a favorite question. I, have a I, I encourage Okay. women to do that. All right. Now, I have so. a really favorite question. It's mm -hmm. called my magic wand question. Okay. All right. Pretend I'm handing you a magic wand right now. Where would you like to see the entire advocacy process go? You're a pioneer, my dear. Mm -hmm. You know that? Here in yeah. Texas, this is pioneering country. You, you are an absolute pioneer in what you've done, and congratulations for that. Thank but you. now, all these years down the road, the Alamo uh, Breast Cancer Foundation has grown. Think, 
U.S., think global. Where would you like all of this to go? Well, magic wand now. Okay. All right. I have Assuming my magic go. wand. All right. Okay. <clears throat> I have seen too many people die. Yes, ma'am. I have seen too many people suffer. Right. I have, in the 23 years that I've been a survivor, I have only seen three or four major breakthroughs. What would you highlight those to be? I think that the discovery of the BRCA1, BRCA2 is okay, one. Okay, fair enough. Okay, fair enough. and that helps 10%. Yep. The discovery of HER2 and yep. Herceptin leading yep. to more targeted therapies yep. is one. Yep, 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 yep. I'm with um, And I have to say that I think the Oncotype DX test that predicts reoccurrence and helps uh, right. patients make a decision is a very good break. Particularly if they can avoid chemotherapy. Absolutely. You know, who, with the side effects. I, right. I, I, I have to live with side effects. I, Even though I look normal, I have I, side effects. You look fantastic. <laughs> right. by, by the way, you look phenomenal. You okay, look fantastic. You. But, you know, <laughs> I've been focused on this area for 27 years. Mm -hmm. You know what, Dale? I have yet to meet the first patient to walk through the door and say, Dr. Hurtis, Tell me all about that chemotherapy. I'm really looking forward oh, to it. Oh, God, please. So any, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anything that we can do to avoid chemotherapy and obviously move in the it's direction. It's very scary. Well, of course it is. Yes. You bet. It, 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 it's terrifying. And one of the reasons that I also, working with Todd, we created BreastCancerAnswers.com, is when I see patients initially, it is the proverbial uh, deer in the headlights. There's just nothing but stark fear. Almost oh, one of the absolutely. first questions they ask is, um, "Am I going to die?" Well, not only that, am I going to mm -hmm. die, but um, do I need chemotherapy? Oh yeah, almost yeah. One of the that's first, so, that's yeah. very scary. All right, Any probably other? more scarier than this surgery. I, that's right. <laughs> that is exactly correct. Because they so, think they're going to be sick for six months. Uh, absolutely correct. <laughs> So anything else, Dale, to sort of, uh, this is Well, you know, you're a surgeon. Yeah, I am. And, and I think that the sentinel node is a, is a discovery. A absolutely. And, and that spares women uh, lymphedema. Absolutely. In fact, yeah. there's another embargoed story that was released this morning mm -hmm. about using the sentinel node after upfront chemotherapy, after mm -hmm. a neoadjuvant chemotherapy, and it came from our, our colleagues uh, um, uh, at the American College of Surgical Oncology Group which is really fabulous, and I think that's going to be a game changer, as the Z11 study was, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, even though you've got a positive sentinel lymph node, you don't necessarily have to do an axillary lymph node dissection. One of the things that I'm excited about, too, is our movement toward nipple sparing mastectomy, which we believe we can do safely as well. So, okay. Okay. So I haven't ma waved the magic wand yet. Oh, you haven't finished? Oh, well, we got a couple more minutes. Okay, can I just say Abby, that absolutely. as a survivor, as a patient advocate, I want to, um, I, and our organization is very aligned with the Breast Cancer Deadline 2020, which is going to look into a primary prevention, which will prevent breast cancer okay. and control the metastasis and basically control the disease. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Dale, I think that really summarizes just mm -hmm. very, very beautifully your comments here today. Todd's getting ready to mic up over there and, and introduce our next guest and to make a few announcements. On behalf of us at Breast mm -hmm. Cancer Answers and Genomic Health and all those folks, thank can you I shake your much. hand? Yes, and thank, thank you. So you. Much I enjoyed for being it here. very much. I oh, enjoyed meeting good. you. Well,